Hello, everyone. Welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live for Saturday, February 17th. Our topic today is Book Creator in the Classroom. Our special guest is John Smith. Your co-moderators are Peggy George, I'm Lori Moffat, Tammy Moore, and Paula Noggle. Thanks to Tammy for doing the closed captioning for us. And I'm going to turn the mic over to Maureen, who will introduce John and ask him the newbie question. Thanks, Lori. I was just so happy to see Book Creator come to Chrome Browser this year. I know that there are so many ways that students can use it and it's thrilled to get a virtual introduction to John Smith, who will be telling us all about the wonderful ways to use Book Creator to enhance our lessons. John is currently an Apple Distinguished Educator and Technology Integration Specialist for Alliance City Schools in Ohio where his class ebook projects have attracted attention for their global reach and practical approaches to integrating transliteracy practices into the classroom. John was a special education teacher for 12 years before moving into technology integration. John recently organized seven global ebook projects in which classrooms from around the world wrote and published ebooks. John, a scratch developer and Apple enthusiast, is married with two children. In his spare time, he teaches three classes on engage spare time, John, and on engaging technologies for the Communicate Institute. You can connect with John on Twitter at the iPod Teacher. Welcome, John. All right, thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. Can you hear me? Okay. Yep. And John, your newbie question, why is it important for students to be creators and not just consumers of content? Uh, I, lo I absolutely love this question. Uh, and I'm a, I'm a big believer in students, um, I say, making their learning. Uh, I think that um, too often, and I still see it today, too often we see teachers that are just handing out worksheet after worksheet after worksheet, um, or in the terms of technology, digital worksheet after digital worksheet after digital worksheet. And I'm a, I'm a huge fan of kids um, showing what they know by, by making something. And I guess if I've if given my na uh, myself a name for anything, it's because of, of making books. And so uh, I'm very passionate about uh, what I'm going to talk about today. And I'm super excited that, uh, that we've got a, a chat room full of people uh, ready to learn some new stuff. All yours, John. Take it away. All right. So, um, so this is me, uh, John Smith. So that you can you can see who I am. I am the iPod teacher on Twitter. Uh, if you want to email me, my email is right there, iPodTeacher at me dot com. I love um, talking about books, and I'm always happy to um, respond to emails. So, if, if you're interested in that, uh, please feel free to email me. I know a lot of times people say that, and they don't really mean it, um, but I do mean it. So I'm, I'm happy to um, talk and continue the conversation. Um, I do want to stress first that, I, that I, am, I am rather excited about this topic. And my slides, even though there are a billion of them, um, will go rather quickly. So I'm hoping the uh, internet will, will hold up for everybody uh, and that this will make sense to you um, as we are going along through, this, uh, through my story today. So um, like was mentioned, um, I, I do have three kids. I think I forgot to change that in my bio. So I apologize for that. I do have three kids. My son James is seven. My daughter Jillian in the middle, uh, she is four. And my daughter Joelle is 10 months. All three of them are sick right now. And uh, one of them is at the doctor's. So it's been a, it's been a crazy week in uh, the Smith house. All right, so uh, next slide. Again, I was a special education teacher for 12 years. I taught special ed mostly in fourth and fifth grade. Um, a couple a couple years I had some sixth graders in there. Uh, one year I had kindergarten kids, but uh, special education for most of my career. Um, I did transfer over to Alliance City Schools, which is where I am currently, and I'm a technology integration specialist uh, for Alliance. I always I always tease people and and tell them that I have no responsibilities whatsoever. Um, but that's not true. I, I get to sit in my office. I get to play with technology. I provide um, professional development to uh, teachers and students on a daily basis. Run, you know, staff PD training, you know, all kinds of stuff. Um, and I'm the voice of snow days uh, in my district, which is really spectacular. 
um, except it's not as great as it sounds because everybody thinks I get uh, some advanced knowledge of snow days, and I literally find out three minutes before the rest of the uh, the district. So it's not as cool as it really sounds. Um, I love golf, uh, so if there's any golfers out there, you know, raise your hand in the chat box, I guess. Um, I played 65 rounds of golf last uh, last summer, which was um, uh, very very low for me because of uh, my I had a hand injury, so that was a bad season. The year before, that, I had 165 rounds of golf, and so um, this year I'm getting ready to go back into the thing. I'd rather play in pain. Um, just so that I, that I can keep going. And Leah has a golf cart. Yes, it does count, Leah, so good job there. Um, I do teach a communicate class in my spare time. Uh, I know we, we kind of giggled about that when we heard it. Um, but, yes, I have uh, some spare time, and I do teach three graduate courses. I actually have one coming up in March, April, and two in June. So it's, it's, a, it's a busy time of year. Um, but these classes are for teachers to um, earn their license renewal. So it's a, it's a good time. and a lot of great fellowship with all these these people in the classes, so that's really cool. Um, a book creator ambassador, uh, which will make sense, especially here as you hear my story. I'm an Apple Distinguished Educator, which was mentioned, and that brings us to today. All right, so um, like every good story, my story has a beginning, all right? And my beginning of my story starts with these guys. These are my fifth grade special education students. And if you, if you look at that picture and you look at these students, you, you're probably thinking, wow, those, those kids look kind of nice. You know, they're smiling. They're, you know, they're decent-looking kids, right? They look kind of happy. And um, I, I don't want that to fool you because these students, are, are, they were absolutely evil. Um, they, were, they were some of the worst students that I had ever had in my entire career. And um, it was bad. I mean, it was very bad. Uh, most of the time in the classroom. And the biggest problem that they had is a problem that some of us may have in there are classrooms. I don't know. Um, I did. And that was that the students didn't care. And these students were, you know, they were tough. Like I said, they, they were just brutal. And for the most part, they could care less about anything um, that I had to talk about. They didn't care about science. They didn't care about math and social studies and and they didn't care about me or their friends or lunch or recess or any of that stuff. And, and so that, that got me wondering, you know, I was like, like, why is that? You know, why is that the case? Like, why do these kids struggle um, to care about anything? Um, and uh, I, I like that. Do, do they not care? <laughs> the question that came across the board is, do they not really care? Or is it just a, a way to avoid things? You know, I, I don't know. Um, but for me, it just seemed like I didn't care about anything at the time. And so I began to wonder, um, especially about writing. Like, why did kids hate writing? And, you know, I thought about it. I hated writing, and I wasn't sure why. So I, I started looking into this. And, you know, I did what all of the, you know, like the really good teachers do. Um, you know, in Ohio, we have an evaluation system. So, like, these would be, like, the middle, gra you know, the middle grade teachers, the good teachers. Nobody cares. You know, let them do their thing. But nobody's going to get in trouble um, being one of these types of teachers. And so I did whatever the good, good teacher does, and I, I put off the daily writing prompts. And, and I thought that, you know, if I just changed up the daily writing prompts a little bit, that would be enough to, to help them out. And, and so I, you know, I did. I went in the next day to the kids, and I was like, hey, guys, today we're going to write. And the kids, you know, they weren't real happy. And I said, no, listen, it's going to be fun because today we're going to pretend like we're dogs. You know, we're going to write about the day in the life of a dog. And... Um, the kids just kind of looked at me, they're like, what are you talking about? And I was like, yeah, listen, it's going to be really cool because we're going to wake up, we're going to lick our butts, you know, what happens next, right? What, what, what is it like to be a dog? And, and these kids just looked at me and they're like, no, that's stupid. And we're not going to write about that. We, we don't want to hear that. And, and so, you know, I got like, okay, I, I thought it was kind of fun. Um, you know, it didn't work. Um, and so they hated it. And so I tried again the next day. I was like, hey, guys, today's National Pizza Day. Um, but you know what? It's, it's cool, right? And the kids are like, no. And I'm like, no, it is cool. Because like, what's your favorite pizza? What's your, what's your um, favorite crust and toppings? And like, what are the things that you like? And the kids are just like, none of that. So please stop, stop asking me to write. And so I was sad. You know, I was like, what, what, what was going on? And, and so I decided I was going to try something again. 
And so I did what every, like, extraordinary teacher does, right? I, I said, you know, if any place has the answer, I have to do what the really, really good teachers do. And I have to go to the teacher store. That's, that's it, right? That'll have my answers. And so I went to the teacher store, and I looked in there, and I was fishing around for stuff. And, and finally, in the, in the very back, in the, in the corner, there was the writing section, and I found it, the holy grail of writing. The 730 journal prompts, right, two for every day of the year. I was like, this is it. This will have my answers. If, if the kids don't like something in this book, then, then something is clearly wrong with these students, right? And so I took that into the class, and I said, guys, guess what? Today we're going to write. And I pulled out this, this big old, you know, Bible of journal prompts, and the kids were like, no, we are not going to write, and we're not going to do any of those. And, and I was just like, oh, my gosh, like, why? What is, what is wrong with these kids? And, and so, again, again, I just kept asking myself why. Um, what is it that, that is making these kids hate writing so much um, that I can't entice them, you know, to do anything in that journal, uh, in that journal book? And so I started thinking about this. And, you know, four or five years, uh, I started thinking about, um, you know, uh, things that I could do. And uh, I love this. I love that some of the comments in here, Google Docs, Slides, and Spark, um, you know, those are great tools. And, you know, six years ago, six and a half years ago when I was having this problem, most of that wasn't around. And so this was very different, you know, for me back then. Um, and so I started asking again why, and I started thinking about it, and I came up with some very good reasons. And I looked, and the first, first reason I came up with was that for the most part, students, when they are writing or when they're doing schoolwork, that they are writing for an audience of one, you, right? I mean, if we're lucky, the kids will go home and they'll put it on the refrigerator and then we're writing for like an audience of two or three, maybe four. Um, but for the most part, it's just an audience of one. And that's, and that's not good enough. These kids have a global following right now, except for when they go to school. And, and so I was like, okay, I gotta find ways to change this. And then um, also, to kind of go along with that, and the students, when they look at us, they don't see teachers, okay? They don't see teachers. They see, they see this, right? They see this, this ugly uh, monster who wants to take their writing and just hoard it for themselves, right? Just keep it for themselves and not, not share it. And so that's not cool. So, you know, I was like, okay, there's, there's one idea. And then the, the second idea was that students, when they are, are working, they don't typically work together. They're just kind of working in, you know, alone by themselves. And even, even today, not six years late, you know, earlier, I still see this today in classrooms. The, the students are working by themselves. They're not uh, supposed to talk to anybody. They're not allowed to, uh, to work with anybody, right? So this is, this is bad news. And then the last piece is that students aren't leaving behind any kind of legacy. The students are doing all of this work. They're giving it to just their teachers. And nobody else gets to benefit from it. And so you ask a kid, you're like, hey, you just graduated high school. You know, what, uh, what did you leave behind? Like, where's your work? And the kids just kind of look at you dumbfounded, like, I don't, I don't know. What did I leave behind? You know, gum under the desk? I mean, like, maybe, maybe that's it. Um, and so, you know, that's not cool. And so I started thinking about those three points. And I started wondering, you know, what's next? Right? What am I going to do? Um, and, I started thinking about this, and, you know, again, I kept wondering, I kept wondering, until finally I came across Book Creative for the iPad. Um, now, it is available on Chrome. They're both very similar uh, to how they operate. There's a few notable differences, but for the most part, Book Creator on Chrome is the same as iPad, and, and, but that's where I started. I started with the whole iPad piece, and um, I, I absolutely fell in love with it, and so I went to my kids. Uh, you know, I had an idea, right? I was gonna, I was gonna take this, this writing to them, this, this book creator app, and, and give them an idea. So I went into school and I said, hey guys, guess what? And they said, what? You know, I can see their faces, they're not real happy. I said, guys, today we're gonna write, um, again, and the kids are all, you know, not happy, and they're it, 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 very angry with me, and the one girl was starting to scream, and, and she's like, what is it? Is it, uh, you know, are we gonna pretend like we're cats today? You know, and, and I was like, no, 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 it's, it's, it's cool. Okay, we're going to do something a little bit different. And she goes, well, what, uh, are we going to pretend like, uh, you know, it's National Taco Day or something? You know, like, what is it? 
And I was like, no, no, listen, it's cool. And I mean, these kids are getting really upset. And I said, listen, there's, there's more to the story. Okay, there's more to the story today. And they said, what is it? And I said, I've, I've come to a conclusion. I said, your writing is, is terrible. Uh, it's, it's always been terrible, and it probably will never get any better. So today, kids, we're going to write a book, and we're going to publish it for the entire world to see. And so the kids were like, wait a minute, you just started writing. It's terrible. Why would, you, why would we ever want to write a book and publish it for the world? And I said, oh, well, because I want the rest of the world to know how terrible your writing is, right, so that I don't feel like I'm all by myself anymore. And so the kids are just looking at me in shock. They probably have faces like you guys have right now. You're probably like, wait, what is he talking about? And, and that's literally what I said to the kids. I was like, I, I, the world needs to know how bad your writing is. And so, well, then after I said that, I started to get some hands in the air. And Tommy, he looks at me, he goes, Mr. Smith, he goes, if we're gonna, if we're gonna write for the world, then don't you think that we should probably make it a little bit better? And I said, aha, yeah, absolutely. And so the kids, they started asking me more questions, like, what are we going to write about? And I said, you know what? I don't care what we write about. We can write about whatever you want. That's up to you. And the kids looked at me, and they, were, they thought it was strange because they're like, well, wait a minute. If we're, you know, you're supposed to tell us what to do. You're the teacher. That's what teachers do. They tell us what to write about. And I said, nope, I don't, I don't care what you write about. It's up to you. And so the kids were like, huh. Okay, and then the kid was like, well, how long is it going to take? And I said to them, guess what? I don't, I don't care how long it takes because, you know, it could take two days. It could take a week. And knowing some of you, it might take three months to finish this. And they're like, oh, okay. Well, all right. But they were still excited. And then finally, somebody said, well, how much money are we going to make? And I said, well, guess what? We're not going to make money on this because we're going we're gonna to sell this book to the world for free because I'm not going to try to hunt you down to give you money for one, right, if we sold one of these books. I'm not going to try to hunt you down. Um, but the bigger point is that this is going to make you famous, right? You are going to be a student who published a book because six years ago nobody was doing this, right? Nobody was using digital forms to publish digital books, all right, especially with Book Creator and, you know, iBooks Author and, and different tools like that. So the kids, I was like, you guys will make history. You'll go down history. You'll be famous. Kids, all those little kids that you don't like coming up, they will absolutely love you. They will love you. Um, and so they were just like, wow, this is, I mean, you know, they were like, okay, let's do this, right? They were like super excited. And I was like, wait a minute, this, is, this might actually work, right? So, I mean, I was, I was super, super excited. So I, I, we went in, I talked to the kids about the writing process, and I said, hey, we got we to gotta think about this. You know, every story has a beginning, a middle, end, all the characters, setting the plot, all of that important stuff. And so we started talking. And we stopped, and we collaborated, and we listened to each other. And the kids, they, fi they finally started coming up with an idea. And so I was really excited about this. The kids, uh, you know, I was like, oh, my gosh, you guys have an idea. This is awesome. What is it? And so Tommy raises his hand. He's like, Mr. Smith, he's like, I got this idea. He's like, there's these two kids, Marvin and Ashley. And Marvin and Ashley, they're sitting at home one night, and they are they're surfing the web, and they come on to Craigslist. And I was like, whoa, Craigslist, mm -mm, bad stuff, right? Because Craigslist, you know, there's, there's some shady things going on there. I was like, this is not going to be good. And I almost did what teachers do. We don't, we don't try to do this, but I almost did it. I almost squashed the idea. I almost said, look, yep, this is bad. Craigslist is scary. Not going to happen, right? But luckily, I didn't do that. And I sat there, and I said, okay, tell me more. And so Tommy in the class, they're like, there's these two kids, Marvin Ashley, they're surfing the web. They find this town, let's call it Desert Town. In this town, they're struggling with language arts topics. And I was like, wait, what? And he's like, yeah, like synonyms and antonyms and, and uh, similes and metaphors. And this other kid goes, and abbreviations, I hate that stuff. And so I was just like, what is happening? And he's like, this, these kids, Marvin and Ashley, they go to this town so they can solve their language arts problems. <laughs> I was like, oh, my gosh. I was like, wow. Like, and then it hit me. I was like, oh, my gosh. This is, this is uh, my class is Marvin and Ashley, and they are going to this town, desert town, which is also them, and that they are going to help each other out. And I was just like, wow, this is super, super exciting. Then after a couple weeks, we had the two kids in desert town, right? This is their book. Yeah, the Simile Cafe, 
uh, this is this, again, this is available for free. You know, the, the kids are acting out scenes. Uh, they're writing pages, right? The book goes live. I'm on Twitter. I'm like, download our book. You know, help us out. Uh, you know, a bunch of special ed kids feel bad for them. Something, right? I just wanted kids um, to have this. Um, I just wanted kids to have this opportunity, right? That that people were that would they would be able to read their book. And so it goes live. And you know, I'm on. I, you know, I go to sleep and I'm just you know praying that in the morning I wake up and we had some sales, right? And well, I woke up. I logged into the system, and guess what? We had some sales, and there were 16 downloads of our book. And I was so excited, so excited, that I went into class the next day. I was like, hey, guys, guess what? Today, the kids, uh, I'm sorry, today, people downloaded your book. We had 16 downloads. And the kids were like, oh, my gosh, they were so excited. And I said, yeah, that's awesome. They're like, 16 downloads. I said, yes, yeah, 16 downloads. And they said, oh, my gosh, can we, can we graph that out in the hallway? And I said, wait, time out. That's math. I was like, you want to graph that in the hallway? And the kids are like, yeah. And I was like, oh, my gosh, now we got, like, cross-curricular stuff happening. They were pumped. And so we went down to the art room, and we ripped off the rolly paper, and we put it up on the wall, and we graphed 16 downloads. And the kids were just stoked. I was stoked. I went home. I couldn't sleep. I was so excited. I just wanted to wake up and see how many downloads we had. I mean, it was a bad night, right? Like, I just couldn't go to sleep. And so I was struggling, right? Well, the next morning, I woke up, and I finally, I logged into the system, and I looked, and it said 10 downloads. And I was like, oh, no, 10 downloads? I was like, six people returned a free book. And I was like, this is terrible. I was like, oh, my gosh, the world really does know how bad their writing is. The, the, this is awful, right? This is awful. So I go to school, and the kids, they're just like, Mr. Smith, do we have downloads? What do we do? How do we do? And I just, I lied to them all day. I couldn't tell them the truth. I couldn't tell them that, that the world did hate their stuff and gave it book, a free book, gave it back. And so it was, it was very sad. It was depressing. I lied, like I said, I lied to the kids all day long. I had no trouble going to sleep that night because I was in deep depression mode. Uh, I just didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to say to the kids. So the next morning, I woke up, and I looked, and I wanted to check our sales again. And so I looked at the sales, and it said 16. And I thought, okay, at least we're back to square one, and maybe, maybe I can fudge my way through a day, right? I can fudge my way through the day, and the kids will be okay with it. I don't have to lie to them, but I can just kind of stretch the truth a little bit. Well, then I looked a little bit closer, and I realized that this wasn't 16 total downloads. This was 16 daily downloads. So we had 16, 10, 16, 38, 47, 106, 352 daily downloads of this book. And the, I was just stoked. And the kids were stoked, and we're graphing this out in the hallway, and we're, we're continuing to graph, you know, making predictions. When are we going to hit 1,000? When are we going to hit 2,000? And it was just an amazing experience for these students. And so, um, you know, f one day I was walking into the office, and uh, the principal, uh, he called me into the office, and I'm sitting there thinking, it's about time, right? After 1,500 downloads, my principal finally uh, got it. Right, and he's like, "All right, let's have this conversation." So I was like, "Yeah, what's up?" He's like, "Well, I want to talk to you about your books." And I was like, "Okay, awesome. I can't wait. Let's talk about the book." And he goes, "Well, can you shut the door behind you?" And I was like, "Uh oh, this is this is a different conversation than I than I thought uh, this was going to be." And so I was like, "Okay." So I shut the door behind me and uh, sat down, and I was like, oh, "Okay, what you know, what's up?" And he says, "Well." Um, you know, your special ed director wants to know um, why you are wasting all this time writing a book with your kids. And I was like, wait, what? And he said, yeah, I just want to know, you know, your special ed director wants to know why you're wasting all this time writing a book with your kids. And I looked at him and I said, you mean as opposed to the scripted reading program that I'm supposed to be doing? Is that what you're, is that what you're asking? And he just kind of looked at me, and he was like, yeah, yeah, I think so. And I said, well, we, we wrote a book. I said, you realize that, right? We wrote a book. We've had $15,000 or 15,000 or 1,500 downloads of this book, right? And, and he goes, yeah. 
And I said, and you're asking me why we're wasting time? And he said, yeah. And he goes, well, don't worry. I got your, your special ed director off your back. And I said, oh, okay, what did you say? You know, what did you say to her? And he goes, well, I told her that you weren't really wasting classroom time doing this, that you were writing the book at home and that you were just telling the kids that it was their book just to, like, make them feel better. But really, you were writing the book. <laughs> and I said to him, I said, but that's a, that's a lie. Right, that's a lie. That's not, that's not true at all. That, that we are writing this book. And we are doing it in class. And he goes, well, do you think maybe you could tell me a couple standards that you, uh, a couple standards that you covered during that, that, that activity? And I said, you have got to be kidding me. Standards? I said, this is what we're talking about, right? And he's like, yeah, if you can give me a couple standards. So I, I stormed out of the class, out of his office. And I went to my um, teacher mailbox, and I looked up my standards book list, because that's where I kept them. I kept them in my mailbox. And I looked at the standards, and I highlighted 72 of them across the curriculum, right? Math, science, social studies, all these different grades, all these, uh, 72 of them. I went into his office, and I slammed the books down on his desk, and I said, here you go. This is not, and that's why I'm not there anymore, and that's why I'm in alliance. Um, I'm just kidding. I, I didn't get fired. But I was like, you got to be kidding me, right? This is the conversation that I'm, I'm having with somebody about student publishing books. And, and I was like, you got to be kidding me. So anyway, uh, after a while, the kids ended up, they were so excited. They wanted to make a sequel. We made a sequel. Then the sixth graders wanted to get involved. And we wrote a book with the sixth graders. We wrote a math textbook, uh, you know, 97 pages, 26 chapters, 57 videos, 67 screencasts, math textbook written by kids. And so we had three books at the, at, at the last year of my elementary um, career. And so anyway, I go on to Alliance, and the idea continued, and I met some English teachers, and specifically I met my friend Chris uh, Schillig, and he um, is a guinea pig, and he's like, I'll, you know, I'll do anything once, and I'll try it, and we'll see what happens. And so I went to this guy, and I said, okay, let's, uh, let's do some books. And so I started talking with him. And we got together with the English department and the interactive media teachers. And in the first year, uh, we wrote six children's books um, in the interactive media department. And so, and I thought these books were amazing because, like, we've got space animals here, right? Probably not the best children's book because it's all about animals that we send into space and how they died, right? It's sad. It's not the best book, but it was really well written. And there was a lot of great research that went into it. We've got a book, Angry is Okay. And this is... Uh, a book that a girl wrote um, about she was always in the counseling department office and she just wanted to write a book for other little girls to tell them that it's okay to be angry and here's how you can deal with it. And, and so, you know, very touching um, kind of stuff. And by, by the end of that first year, just at the high school alone, between Book Creator and, and iBooks Author, we wrote, um, you know, almost 15 books that, that first year. And, and it, was, it was absolutely amazing. Well, then... Um, I met I met Pam, and Pam is a speech pathologist, and she went to our network manager and said, hey, I need to learn how to use iMovie uh, because I want to use it to engage my students and get them excited about stuff. And so Chad, our network manager, said, hey, you really ought to talk with John um, because John, uh, he's new to our district, uh, and, and this is, um, you know, he's a good guy. You ought to check him out. So she contacts me, and we, we're talking one day, and she's like, I've got these um, – fourth grade autistic boys, and I think it'd be really cool, you know, if we use iMovie with these kids. And I said, well, tell me about them. And she says, well, they're autistic. Um, you know, they, they have very bad social skills. Uh, you know, academically, they're, they're doing terrible. You know, they, they just, you know, speech, they, they have articulation problems, all kinds of different things. And so I said, okay, um, when, when do you meet with them? And I said, I think we should write a book. And she goes, I don't think you listen to anything I just said. And I said, no, you did. I said, but, but here we go. I said, let's talk about this. And so um, we talked, and I decided and agreed to meet with her on Wednesdays at 1230. And so I went in on Wednesday, and I, I met her kids, and they come flying into the classroom, and they see me, and, and they just they go into the corner, and they put their heads down because they don't know who I am. And like I said, you know, they had some social issues. They're autistic, and they just wanted nothing to do with me. And so I started talking to them. I was like, hey, guys, my name's Mr. Smith. I'm from the high school. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm here to talk to you today because I heard that your writing is really bad. And the kids are kind of like nodding their heads in the corner. And I said, and I heard your social skills are terrible, which is why you're staring at your feet and not looking at me. And the kids are, again, nodding their head going, yeah, well, that's true. 
And, and so I said, well, we're going to write a book. And so I started talking to them about this whole book building idea. And, and so the kids, were, they became excited, and they were like, well, wait a minute, this is pretty cool. And after a while, they came up with an idea about a book they wanted to write, and their book was Social Skills, Volume 1, right? Because what are these kids terrible at? They're terrible at, at social skills, and they wanted to write a book about it. So this book is filled with different ideas of, like, you know, how to start and stop a conversation, why eye contact is important, um, you know, how to, how to end the conversation. I mean, it, it was a great book, and it was all their idea. The, the ideas that they wanted to come up with and talk about. And so we wrote this book, we published it, and after a while we had, you know, a bunch of downloads of the thing. It was a popular, very popular book. And Pam was very smart. She put a pin in a map on the wall every time they, a book was sold or, or downloaded in a, in a different country. She put a pin in the map. And the kids loved it. And one day, they're standing out in the hallway, and Jack, the kid in the middle, who, who one of the teachers absolutely couldn't stand because the kid would never write, he would never do any work, which we know is total garbage because he just did, and then we, pu we published the book. He's standing out in the hallway, and a general ed student sticks his hand up and goes, what's that? And Jack says, that's a map. That's a map of where we sold all of our books. Look, we sold one in Germany. We sold one in South America. We sold one in Brazil. We sold one in uh, you know, Ohio. We sold one in Canada. We sold one here. And the kids, they were so excited. They were like, wow, that's really cool. So these three rejects, right, not my words, these are the, this is the way these kids were looked at, by teachers and by kids. Right? These three rejects of the building became published authors. And the kids in the building became their friends. Like, they were like, this is so cool. And so I was just like, oh, my gosh, this is amazing. And it was so cool that when the kids wanted to do social skills volume two, if you look closely on this slide, down in the bottom left, we've got a Zion, our special guest. Right? Zion is a general ed kid who became their friend, and he went up to the teacher, Mrs. Perkowitz, and he said, hey, Mrs. P, he goes, I heard you guys are writing a sequel to the first book. And she goes, well, yeah, we are. And he goes, Mrs. P, I got skills. I got skills. I can do this. And so I can help them. And so this general ed student showed up uh, – every Wednesday for 30 minutes during speech class to help write these books. That's probably against the law here in Ohio, right? This kid was like an honorary special ed kid. He showed up 30 minutes for the rest of the year so they could work on this book. And I just thought it was absolutely amazing. New year, Jack goes on to middle school, Zion still hanging out here with the special ed kids, and now we enter Jenna. And so what do we decide to do? Volume three. Because what are these kids terrible at doing? Riding the bus. And so we, so we did a manners, of, manners on the Bus, right, Volume 3. And it was just so cool. Well, then at this point, Pam, you know, she kind of goes off and does her own little thing and doesn't need me to help all the time. I've just become like the little publishing house at this point. So Pam, she has a group of girls after school, and they, they came up with this book, How to Survive Bullying, and, and then Tongue Twisters for Kids with uh, Articulation Problems. And then the next year, Jack, comes and he joins the girls group after school and he does a book on bullying with the girls. But what I really like about this one, the book is called Never Surrender, right? A teenaging, Teenager's Guide to Bullying. Jack, again, one of the quote most worthless kids in the school, comes up to the teacher and says, hey, Mrs. P. He goes, you know what? I, I uh, have an idea for the book. And she goes, what's that? And he goes, the only thing that has gotten me through middle school is a song called Never Surrender by the Christian rock group Skillet. And she goes, oh, that's, that's awful, sad, Jack, you know. And he's like, it's been so bad with bowling. That's the only thing I do. I listen to that song all day long every day, and it helps me. And she goes, oh, okay. And he goes, I think that we should put that song into the book. And Pam, you know, she looked at him, and she's like, well, Jack, I think that's a great idea, but, you know, that – there's royalties and copyright laws and things like that. And I don't, I don't think we can, I don't think we can do this. And, and Jack goes, oh. And he goes, well, well, guess what? He goes, I, I, I contacted the management company and I got their permission. Uh, we're allowed to use their song in our book. Right? And I was like, you gotta be kidding me. That's amazing. So in that book, we have a song written by Skillet uh, and performed by Skillet. That as a dedication, and I, and I just think it's absolutely amazing that, again, this kid, who wouldn't do anything um, for any teachers, is, is looking into contacting management companies so that he can get his, uh, their song put in the book.
All right, so very, very cool stuff. So I know what some of you might be thinking, like, well, what about what about the little kids, right? What about the little kids? You've talked a lot about, like, high school kids. you got fifth grade autistic or fourth grade autistic boys. You know, what else? What else can you do? You know, um, we've got a fairy tale book by fourth graders, Traffic ABCs, and a book about safety by second graders, all about bats written by first graders. We've got books on elephants and numbers and fish and reptiles. These are books written by kindergarten kids. And all of these are written by kindergarten kids. And we've got more, shark tales, China, you know, amazing sea creatures, and mammals, bats and spiders and healthy foods, fire safety, circles and shapes, feelings, more bats, right? And that's all kindergarten kids. So we had a blast doing this. The whole school, every class in the school wrote at least one book. At the beginning of the year, one of the teachers came to me and she's like, Mr. Smith, can you help us publish his book? And say, yeah, sure, how many you got? She was 15. It was the third day of school, right? It was the third day of school. And these kids wanted to write books. So very cool stuff. Well, then one night, um, I was uh, on Twitter, and somebody asked a question. And I, you know, the question was, does anybody have any ideas for a collaborative uh, poetry project of some sort? And so, you know, I was like, oh, I, I have some ideas. Um, so I opened my big mouth, and I said, I thought it would be, it'd be really cool if I could find a class in uh, Ohio to join together with your class in South Carolina, and we could come together to write a book. And she was like, yeah, this is really cool. And before I knew it, another teacher joined in, and we had three teachers, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Ohio, come together. And after a couple of weeks, we wrote the Collaborative Poetry Project. And it was amazing. It was a book of poetry about where these kids live. And, and so that was my, my first uh, foray into the whole global book thing, and that right there, ruined my life because I just wanted to do more of these collaborative books on a global scale. And that began the TWEMA project. Um, and if you don't know what TWEMA stands for, it actually stands for this talk, The World is My Audience. And so I decided to take this idea, um, this global idea, and I went on to Twitter and I asked a very simple question. And I said, I'm looking for a um, one classroom from every state and every country in the world to come together to write a book. Who's in? Very simple question with, with huge implications. And um, people jumped on it. And before I knew it, um, top left image here is The World is My Audience, one, the very first book we did. 38 classrooms from 27 different countries came together to write this poetry book. And it was an unbelievable experience. And the kids loved it, and they, they, the teachers still talk about it. It was so popular that before, uh, before I could even finish publishing this first book, people were asking about, when is the world of my, is my audience two going to come out? I didn't even know there was going to be a two, right? I just wanted to get the first one done. So the second one is about dreams, right? What are kids dreaming about? Like, literally, what are they dreaming about at night? Uh, what are their dreams for the world? What are their dreams uh, for this country, their families? You know, things like that. This book is very touching. This book is 700 pages of student-written dreams. Right? It's a huge book. And after Twema 2, I was like, man, I'm going to need some help because this, these projects were getting, getting beyond, you know, beyond simple. And, and so I, I enlisted the help of my friend Leah, who's actually in the, who's watching the webinar right now. And so Leah helped me, and we started working together on uh, Twema 3. And she's a science teacher. So we decided to use the topic of patterns. And we, we, every time we do one of these books, we try to find different, um, different themes that are vague enough that any subject area in any grade level can participate. And so we've had kids from kindergarten all the way through college uh, participating in the Twema projects. And so we had Twema 3 was patterns. And it was awesome because, you know, there's science patterns and math patterns and music patterns. We had cosmetology teachers doing patterns on fingernails uh, in this book. Um, then the next one was a community engagement project, right, Twema 4. Uh, tell us about your community. You know, what's an important uh, landmark? What's an important person or a person, uh, an idea, a culture, something about your community? Twema 5, what are you cooking up in class? Um, you know, this was a great, uh, a great book, again, about what are you cooking up? What are you learning? Are you cooking up science experiments? Are you cooking up uh, languages? Are you cooking up sentences? You know, like, what, what are you doing? Twema 7. It's the one we just published not too long ago. It's about ex exploration. So I had some kids exploring um, 
you know, family trees, I had kids exploring outside, you know, plants and lots of different things. My personal favorite, though, um, this is still one of my favorites, is Tweema 6, One World. And in this one, kids from around the world, you know, we, we we're tired of hearing um, all the negative things that happen in the world. And so with, with One World, this book was all about things that are beautiful. And so we asked classrooms from around the world to just have their kids take pictures of things that they found beautiful and then explain why. So we had kids taking pictures of grandmas and we had kids taking pictures of dogs and pets and all kinds of different things. So um, it, it was just a beautiful book. It was, it was very touching and it, it was really neat to see uh, what the kids could do, do in that book. Um, yeah, so those are the Twema projects. Um, and so what I like most uh, about those is that the kids are actually, you know, collaborating. They're working together. There's classrooms from all over the world coming together to do, um, you know, do different things. Um, but it also made me want more, right? Like what, could, what else could I do with, with Book Creator and writing books and things like that? And so somebody asked me to um, host a Twitter chat one time, and I, and I told him, I said, okay, I just want you to know it's going to be, it's going to be very different. Okay, I'm going to um, – uh, it's not going to be a typical Twitter chat where somebody asks a question and answer, a question, answer, question, answer. And they said, well, what are you going to do? And I said, they're just going to have to trust me. Right? I'm not going to tell you what we're going to do. Um, and they were kind of nervous, um, but it worked out. Because in one hour on Twitter, instead of questions, we gave them tasks, things that they needed to do. Um, it was the most boring Twitter chat ever, if you look at the archive, because there was like 15 tweets. They were all my own, right? But what we did in that one hour was we wrote, compiled, and published a book all in one hour from start to finish. And so it was an amazing experience. And so now that's one of my favorite things to do. It's called One Book, One Hour Project. Now you got one hour, we're going to make a book from start to finish, and we're going to publish it. I've done it at trainings. Leah has helped me with some of these in trainings before. Um, I've done them on Twitter chat, lots of things. We've done them for the book creator chat. And it's, it's awesome. And one of the things that teachers have said to me after participating in that is that, oh, my gosh, this was one of the most stressful things I've ever done in my life. But I loved it because um, for the first time in 20 years, I know what it's like to be a kid again. And they're like, wow. You know, I thought that was amazing. All I wanted to do was write a book. I could care less about, you know, I wasn't thinking about, like, ulterior motives. I just wanted to know if we could do it. And... And, and we did. And I see a comment there, right? It says, this is how easy Book Creator is. Absolutely. Right? We did this. Uh, we did some in the spring. Yeah, we've done the Book Creator, the tween books for, you know, these one book, one hours for quite a while now. Um, and so uh, it was just an amazing experience. Um, and, and a lot of times as teachers, you know, we're like, hey, kids, you have three weeks um, for your next project, and you have to make a 30-second video clip. Right? I mean, we give these kids way too much time sometimes to do things. And, and I think that it's, uh, it's interesting to, to try this. Um, so, yeah, Book Creator is easy. I actually just did a project or just did a talk um, a, a couple days ago where um, while I was live talking the, a story behind me, we were making a book in, on video in, in real time, in five minutes. So we did this. Um, um, we did this. It was so much fun. Uh, it was just a lot of fun. All right. So, um, so quick review. All right, quick review. Uh, if, you, if you lost count, uh, we've published 115 books in the last six years. We've had over 50,000 downloads. Hopefully that will change today. Right? You guys are going to be downloading all these books. They're all free. And I promised the kids the world, and I think they got it. Our books are sold in 50 of the 51 countries that iTunes sells books in, all right, which, is, which is really cool. It's neat to see the numbers. Because um, it gives the kids something to graph and something tangible, but it's more about the motivation. Uh, you know, what's, I mean, you look at Jack, right, for example. Uh, this kid who everybody gave up on, this kid was a lost cause, um, has become a, a famous author. And the, and the kids are, are, are certainly excited about this. Um, so anyway, very, very good stuff. Um, so let me leave you with a couple final thoughts. Uh, and then we'll, we'll open it up to some questions. I know there's some questions going through. I've been trying to, like, talk and actually read the chat at the same time, and it's, kind of, it's been difficult. <laughs> but you guys are do, you got some good stuff going on in there. Um, so my final thoughts is that your kids need to be making something. Right? They, need to, they need to create. They need to make their learning. 
because too often we sit there and we just have let our kids become worksheet suckers. And, and, and this is not, um, it's not good. Um, I, I see a comment real quick. I can't wait to use this with my great grandson who hates reading. You know, my son is now seven. Uh, he published his first book when he was five. And he decided to publish it for money because he wanted money for toys, right? So, um, you know, he's done three books now. Um, you know, my daughter, I'm sure she'll get into it here too, but they, they love it. And it is great for reading because if you can write a book, then you can read your book. And that just helps. Um, and with Book Creator, there's so many cool things like speech, um, little uh, audio bubbles that go in there. So you can play the button and hear yourself reading um, the book. So just just amazing. All right. The second thing that I want you to, to think about is that your kids need to be working together. Right? They need to be collaborating and working on things, uh, whether it's inside your own classroom or outside of your own classroom, um, but you need to be working together. And then the last piece is that you need to be sharing that stuff because, again, we don't want to be gullen. We don't want to hold on to that work and keep it all for ourselves. Right? That's not good enough. Um, we need to get that work out there. And now this slide right here, my wife and I, we had a big fight about this slide uh, because I, 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 this is not good right, to me. Right? This is not good. And my wife and I were talking about this, and she goes, well, wait a minute. It's okay that they put their work on the refrigerator. And now that my son is in school and he brings home work, you know, we put it on the refrigerator too. But this is okay. But putting their work on everybody's refrigerator I call it the global refrigerator. That's better, right? If we can get our work on our fridge, but then put it on everybody's fridge, that's an amazing, powerful experience for, uh, for students, right? So think about that as we're doing this, the global refrigerator, okay? And, uh, yeah, Brendan, the global fridge chat, we're going we're gonna to get that started at some point. Um, so I'm going to put this, uh, this quote up here. I'm going to leave it here for a second. So you can screenshot it or take a picture of it with your, uh, your phone or something if you need to. But when children create for the world, they make it good. When children only create for their teacher, they make it good enough. And to be honest, good enough isn't good enough anymore. It's not good enough. Uh, because these kids, like I said, they have a, a global following, um, you know, from the time they're born, basically, you know, at this point, and, and except when they go to school, right? And so that's not good. All right, so um, this slide makes a lot more sense if you actually have all the words. I think I sent the wrong slide. Um, but I want to say thanks for being here. It, it would normally say T. Hanks, you know, for Tom Hanks, but it's supposed to be the word thanks. So anyway, I, I appreciate that, um, that you guys came today. I appreciate having the opportunity to tell my story um, and, and hopefully give you some ideas about how you can try this in your classroom. Um, and my information, my contact information is on the slides that are in the, the link that you'll get in the video recording of this when it comes out. Um, so I'm, I'm here for you. I love talking about this. I love helping students so um, become authors. So I'm always around. I'm just a, a tweet or an email uh, or a phone call away. Um, so like I said, happy to help. And so I'm going to flip it over here to um, the questions. So I don't remember exactly how this works out, um, but I'm, I'm ready for questions. So if you got them, let me know. Okay, well, John, I managed to capture a, a few that you didn't answer as you were going along. Uh, so once you finish a book, you put it on iBook, right? Or what? What's the process? Yeah. So um, there's mm -hmm. there's a couple different ways uh, that I've done um, the books. The, the first way, when we first started, we used iBooks Author and Book Creator. Mm -hmm. And in order to get those books um, at that time to Apple, we had to get the book from Book Creator to my computer. And then once it was on my computer, I was able to then upload it to Apple through a program called um, uh, iTunes Producer. And in order to have to get an iTunes Producer account, um, it, I'm, I'm sure it's one of the links, but you have to create an iTunes Connect account. And once you do that, it's, it's fairly simple, just a few button clicks, and then uh, you just got to put in some metadata, like, you know, what's the age content of the book and things like that. And once you um, submit it to Apple, Apple reviews your book, and, you know, at this point we've done so many of these that, you know, 45 minutes to an hour later our book is live and ready for download. Um, but now with, and, and that's, a, that's a fairly easy process, 
uh, once you get in there and play around with it. But now, with Book Creator, directly from the iPad, I can publish a book uh, directly to Book Creator's website, and then I have an, a link almost immediately that I can turn around and give to family members, and then you can read that book anywhere as long as you have an Internet device. Um, book Creator on Chrome, same way. You, there, you, you click a button that says, you know, uh, publish online, and within seconds, it's online and anybody can read it. And so the process has gotten even easier. So when I, when the world I was doing this six years ago, you know, our very first couple of books, we'd have to wait, uh, you know, a couple of weeks before we knew if our book was live and before people mm-hmm. could download it. And now it's, yeah, I click a button and it's online instantly. So I, I love, I love Book Creator. Um, on the iPad, I love their online publishing piece, and I love Chrome's version because, like I said, that's just so, so easy to do. Uh, I did see a question, have I ever used it on a Chromebook? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it, it, Chrome, Chrome version is amazing. Uh, it has Google image search built right in. Um, it has Google Drive connections, so you can pull things from Google Drive. And, um, again, just publish instantly online. Uh, there's a teacher part, so you can do collaborating. Um, with your kids. There's a new feature coming out for Book Creator on Chrome that uh, allows real-time collaboration. So we're talking like Google Docs style collaboration um, on a book. So the Book Creator for Chrome is, is awesome and very powerful. Um, this question says, can you talk about the differences between Chrome and, uh, on, and the Chromebook version and the iOS version? And really that's it. Um, the, the online image search and the real-time collaboration pieces, those are really the only two main differences uh, between the iOS and Chrome version. And those two pieces are going to be coming to iOS in the near future, like this year sometime. So that's really, that's really all there is. Um, can you mix and match between iOS and Chromebook accounts? So I, you can actually have kids create on multiple devices as long as they're sent to somebody centralized, like the teacher. The teacher can then do some finagling to combine those books. So you can do it with multiple devices. Uh, Leah and I did that with our latest uh, Tuma project, Tuma 7. Uh, we had people using Book Creator for iOS. We had people using Book Creator on Chrome. And they just sent them to us. And once, once we got those files, then we were able to combine those books. Any other questions? Yeah, there are a couple more. Uh, would you suggest creating a classroom and having, then having the kids putting their books there? I imagine a virtual classroom. Yeah. So in Book Creator um, on the Chrome, Book Creator on the Chrome version, that yes, there is a, a way that you can um, you create a library, a class library. You get a little uh, class code, and then your kids, when they sign into Book Creator's website on Chrome, it asks them for the code and they put that code, and then their books, as they're making them, show up in the teacher's um, collaborative library. Mm-hmm. And someone asked, have you had any contact with that first class of students lately? You know what? Um, I have not. Um, and that's something that, to me, is uh, it's sad. I, I wish I did. Um, because I, I really want to know how those kids uh, have have turned out mm-hmm. uh, and, and if they've continued the whole writing process. Uh, the year that we finished that book, I left um, Canton City. So I left Canton City and went to Alliance. And once I left uh, Canton City, then I had not heard from anybody else about those students. So mm-hmm. um, it's sad. Um, but I know how excited those kids were when when I was there. And... And the fact that they kept asking me, can we make another book, can we make another book, uh, was astounding. I get emails from teachers all the time who participated in our Tuima project and say, hey, our kids, we made a book in Tuima, you know, Tuima 6, and they, they are in a new grade level, and now they want to do Tuima 7. And I don't even know what it is. Can you tell me about it? You know, because their teacher last year did it with them. Um, mm-hmm. So it's definitely something that, uh, that, that keeps going, um, and it, it's exciting. Those were the questions that I was able to capture and then ask here at the end. Thanks so much, John. I think everybody learned a lot about Book Creator from your experiences with it.
uh, I see some other typing, so there may be. Can't wait to start. Could be another good, one. good. Tim, amazing. Thank you. I'm trying to catch him up in here too. I'm glad you guys all had a good time. And, and like I said, I, I truly mean it uh, when I say please contact me uh, if you have questions. I've even had teachers who don't have iTunes ca accounts who are making books with their kids and then sending them to me so I can publish them for them. <laughs> so, wow. so uh, like I said, I, I will do, I'll do whatever I can uh, to help you guys out. And, I, again, I, I thank you for the comments that are coming through here. I really appreciate it. I'm glad that um, it was worth your time and I didn't waste your Saturday. Again, thanks so much, John. We'll Thank now you. wrap up. I'll turn the mic over to Peggy, who will tell us what's coming up next. John, that was fabulous. We are all so excited now. You know you're going to have some new book creators publishing very soon because you've not only made it exciting, but you've shown us how simple it is. So thanks so much for presenting and sharing your experiences with us. And we do have some well, great you. shows coming up. Um, join us every Saturday that you can, and know that if you can't join us for the live webinar, you can always join us through the recordings, and we'll record and publish every show. So next week, we have a fabulous presenter. Trevor McKinsey is going to talk about dive into inquiry and all about inquiry mindset and how we can work with students to provide that kind of learning experience. March 3rd, Heather Moser is going to do a presentation on enhancing relationships through modern technology tools. And there's always so many tools for us to learn about. And I know that will be great. March 10th, Jolie Boucher is going to talk about ways to differentiate instruction with HyperDocs. And we've had HyperDocs presentations before, so I'm excited that we're going to have an extension to that because there's so many things you can do with HyperDocs, all free. And on March 24th, Paula Fellinger is going to be our feature teacher. She's a second grade teacher. And we love our feature teachers because we get a glimpse into their classroom and we can see all of the amazing things that the teachers and the students are doing. So join us for every Saturday you can. Thanks, Peggy. The Learning Revolution Project is Steve Harkin on Swedish. He's gathered all his PD resources in one place, including host your own webinar, where you can sign up for a Blackboard Collaborate session. And as long as it's open to the public, it's free. You can nominate a featured teacher following this link or from the link in the chat or from within the live binder. You can nominate yourself as a featured teacher as well. The video collection is on iTunes U. And there is a YouTube channel as well where you can subscribe to past recordings. As you exit the session, the survey link should open up in your browser. You can also take the link directly from the chat or the log, or you can get to it within the live binder. At the bottom of that survey, you can request a professional development certificate. It now prints out with your name, thanks to Patty Ruffing, and she also sends these out. Special thanks again to our special guest, John Smith, to Steve Hargadon, the founder of Classroom 2.0, Future of Education and the Learning Revolution to Blackboard Collaborate, for our webinar platform, and to everyone who participated in the show today. Thanks so much for coming. <laughs>